This video will cover using a graphing calculator to find the x-intercepts and vertex of a quadratic function. We will primarily focus on the use of the Alex graphing calculator. Is the Alex graphing calculator different from a graphing calculator such as a TI-84? The functionality of the Alex graphing calculator is similar to what you would find in a TI-84. However, navigating different calculator functions is different for the Alex graphing calculator. So let's get started by doing an example. How do we get to the Alex graphing calculator? We can access the Alex graphing calculator by clicking on the hyperlinked text saying Alex graphing calculator. Once we have done this, you will see the following. This is the Alex graphing calculator. Since the problem is asking us to find the x-intercepts of the function as well as the vertex, we want to start by inputting the function into the calculator. We do this by clicking on the button that says y equals. When we click on this, we see the following. Then we type in the function. If we then click the graph button, we should see a graph of the function appear. We can see the vertex, which in this case happens to be the maximum of the function. The vertex of a quadratic function is always either a maximum or a minimum. In order to find the exact value of the x and y position of the vertex, which in this case is the maximum, we will click on the extrema button. It is important to set the bound so the proper vertex can be identified. In this case, we need to localize the vertex, which means we set the left bound to negative 6 and the right bound to negative 1. Notice how the graph's vertex is within the dotted lines. This will help us identify that vertex. Then we click on the maximum button since we have identified that's what this vertex is. To the right of where it says result, we obtain the x and y value of the location of the vertex. In this case, it is negative 3.5 and negative 3.75, respectively x and y. We can then click OK and we will be returned to the previous display. If we then click on the zero button, we should see the following. Once again, we are going to want to set the bounds to negative 6 and negative 1. And then, we're going to want to click on the zero button in the bottom right. We will see the zeros to the right of results. For this problem, however, there are no zeros at all since the graph does not interact with the x-axis. Great, thanks. So we first input the function under the y equal tab, and then click on the extrema button under the graph tab in order to find the vertex. Then, in order to find the zero, we click the zeros button under the graph tab. Yes, exactly. 